focus on Underworld Police and Ugnaught. Are you guys hyped? They have full Relic 9 teams and the Relic 9 characters for Platoons. Well, I got the game mode for you, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to have a pretty deep discussion on the brand new Rise of the Empire Territory Battles that's coming to Star Wars Galaxies in a few short days. We have early access gameplay of the actual battles to show you. We're going to talk about the rewards. <laughs> we're going to talk about the very controversial riots inciting insane requirements to participate in this territory battles the reward structure, and the most important part of this video at the very end, what do I think of this game mode? I've been sitting on this topic for the past couple days, making graphics, because CG, they can't seem to make graphics. They'd rather just make you read pages upon pages upon pages of text for a mobile game. So I took the liberty of condensing it into a more digestible format so you have an understanding of what you're going into and whether you and your guild should tackle it. So without further ado, if you're excited to Relic 9 Ugnaught, hit that like button, and let's get this party started. So we're gonna roll a lot of gameplay of the new territory battles in this video. Crum, the community manager for Galaxy Heroes, did a random Twitch stream the other night and showed a bunch of gameplay. And we're gonna talk more about this at the end, but if you played previous territory battles, you're not gonna find anything too revolutionary about this, except I will say, the people who do the artwork for the 2D assets and whoever designed the UI for the Conquest map, that's, those are going to be pretty much the most interesting things about this territory battles. But there's going to be spicy drama with this that's probably more interesting. Now, I'm not sure if this was worth my time, but I spent like 10 or so hours digesting the territory battle news and condensing it into just simple graphics for each phases in regards to what you're going to require to go in and participate in this because that's kind of the most important thing should your guild attempt this so i'm just going to quickly show my phase one through phase six graphics and if you need the more in-depth look i'll leave links down below so you can download it so you and your guild can take a more in-depth look at this the long story short of all this is at the minimum you and your guild to even participate in phase one are going to require relic five minimum to participate in the combat missions and the even platoon or what they're calling now operations which is basically ship and character platoons combined you need relic five minimum to do the platoons just in phase one so it's not like previous territories where you platoon and it can just be a seven star character at gear one no you need to actually have a relic five character to put into the relic one operations and for ships you gotta have at least a relic five pilot to throw into operations and this is gonna get a bit more steep as we're gonna talk about <laughs> Oh gosh, they're nuts. And you might be scratching your head and double checking, but yes, these operations, AKA the new platoons are also gonna require galactic legends, conquest units, insane amount of requirements just to add them to operations. And of course they need to meet those relic requirements. So obviously straight off the get go with operations being a core aspect of how you're gonna navigate through this territory battles, it's gonna be very steep just to get through phase one. To participate in phase two, you're gonna need relic six minimum to do the combat missions to add things to the operations. Phase three, you're gonna need Relic Seven Minimum on your entire team to do the combat missions. And you're gonna need Relic Seven Minimum to participate in the Reva special mission for the Inquisitors. And again, Relic Seven Minimum for the pilots and characters to be added to the operations. And it just gets worse from there. Relic Eight Minimum for phase four. Relic Nine Minimum on entire teams and random characters like Ugna and Cup need to be Relic 9 for the operations and for the missions entirely. And that is something unheard of because we do not have full Relic 9 teams. More on that later. And Phase 6 is basically a rehash of Phase 5, Relic 9 minimum for the operations and missions as well. Now, after seeing all these minimum requirements, ranging from Relic 5 to Relic 9, depending on the phase you're in, you might be wondering, should my guild even participate, even try? to do this and here's what i'll say if you're a guild that meets that minimum requirement of 200 million they recommend 250 million gp to get at least somewhat of a decent well i don't know what decent means nowadays but to at least make some sort of action happen inside this new territory they recommend 250 million gp i would say based off this spreadsheet that we have here that was made by dexter lab 97 they show the reward distributions between genos's territorial separatist mine republic offensive and the brand new rise of the empire one thing to note unlike the normal territory battle schedule where it's usually a light and a dark that kind of alternates 
Rise of the Empire is going to happen, you know, two times a month, but it's the same mode, so you're not going to alternate between light and dark side. So what I would say is if you think you've made at least some mild progress inside of Genos' territory, it's at least worth a shot, a try the first go around to just kind of get a litmus test of how ready is your guild list. No one's going to know right now, but once you get that initial try in, and then you can compare and say, all right, well, I got six stars in Republic Offensive, but I got two stars here. Is it going to be worth it? And usually, just looking at it, for equivalent stars, Rise of the Empire is going to reward more guild event token currency, more crystals, and the brand new guild event token three currency. And this is probably the part that people are more interested in at this point. It took me so freaking long to consume, digest, and boil down the key information in regards to this new territory battle with those graphics. So I've had at least like three days to really sit on this and process all this. And we're gonna have to have a little bit of a reality check when it comes to this game. And it's probably not the stuff you're gonna wanna hear, but it's, I think it's kind of the truth. First things first, if you were expecting this to be easy, then the announcement the territory battles came, I think you're way out of line, especially with this type of game. If you thought it was gonna be something revolutionary and new and a deep content experience, you're, uh, I, I think that was a little off target as well. That was something, again, I was not expecting with this new game mode. I was basically expecting a territory battle where I pick my five characters, I put it in an environment, which, you know, there's some new environments, I'll give them that, in this new territory battle, but it's basically, the problem with Galaxy of Heroes right now is the stuff you do is kind of homogenous across all areas of the game. Conquest is a bit similar to territory battles. You got characters, you press one of three buttons, there's a different modifier. So it's not gonna be a revolutionary experience. From watching the gameplay from the community manager, it was after about like one battle, I was like, okay, all right. The thing about the new territory battle, and this kind of boils down to what I think the overall content of Galaxy of Heroes is, is really just chasing the new characters at the end of the day. Where Galaxy of Heroes is right now, where they've tried to develop this game over the past couple years, is they're basically, the game is more or less in a degree of what's called maintenance mode, where the game kind of has seen its full picture, but the game is still doing all right, so it'll kind of do the bare minimum to keep the game operational, but they're not gonna be creating these brand new, deep, unique, content-driven experiences. They instead of have been designing the game to be more of an autopilot type of thing, and then setting the end goals way far in a multi-year future so that way they can focus on other projects in case you aren't familiar with the terminology maintenance mode this is not something that the studio is going to announce like hey guys we've had a good run we're putting the game in maintenance mode and doing bare minimum this is not something they're going to publicly announce and you're not going to find in a form anywhere but you can kind of understand where the game is in its life cycle and maintenance mode is defined as this there's a great quote right here maintenance mode is the point when an mmo is being maintained reliably but isn't being actively developed any longer. This is almost always a net result of the game being older and not having much in the way of budget and or an active player base left to really appreciate active development or, you know, the game is doing all right still. It's not really growing, but you know, it's worth keeping around while they work on other projects and we know Capital Games are focusing on trying to get their Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle Earth up and running. It's entirely possible for something to be worth keeping the servers on or at least not actively detrimental to keep them running without being worth the budget and time for a full development team. That's where I think Galaxy of Heroes is right now. In these situations, maintenance mode means that we get to keep having these games around a sort of middle point between active development and the floundering that a lot of successful titles do. So that's why I say I think this game's in a degree of maintenance mode. So again, I'm not expecting the developers to come out and say, yeah, we're, we're in maintenance, but this is something you're probably not gonna hear them ever announce. All the content, and I say that lightly, they've developed over the past years has been mostly autopilot. Conquest, so you, what do you gotta do? You just gotta set up a couple battles, add a couple of challenges, do this 50 times in a row. And then you have Galactic Challenges, which is a rehash of Conquest, which is a rehash of Territory Battles. Grand Arena is a self-updating game mode. As new characters come and meta changes, the Grand Arena just kind of updates itself. Then you have Datacrons, which they know it was not a popular thing for the game. They've never once come out and even tried to spin it as a popular thing for the community. They just don't really seem to care. And Datacrons, although not loved by the community, take minimal effort and it's just free money. And they don't need to balance it appropriately. They just let it be, and if it's something's broken, it just expires in three months, and they've said that themselves. And then you got territory battles, which again, it's kind of like a conquest, but it's a little bit more thematic. So if you're someone that's been hoping that this game's gonna have like a fundamental shift in its content, where you're gonna get a brand new, unique-like experience, I, I don't think that's gonna be the case. And even the developers, when they were asked if they are gonna work on other stuff, like, hey, can I maybe ever play with my friends in this game? They're just like, ah, no, it's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> you ever be able to battle your friend in Swoga? I'm 
not going to answer all questions related today, but I'll tell you that one's highly unlikely. <laughs> so even the impression I get from the studio nowadays is that they're not in the business of making this game more enjoyable. The game, it is a declining player base, but it's still doing right because it's making money off really the new characters at the end of the day. And for me, the way the thing that's keeping me in the game is really that. That's the thing that got me into the game is because I can collect certain characters and play with them. So really the way I see it, the true new content experience that's gonna at least change things up is just the new characters coming to the game. And that's like, that gets me excited still. That's really all I look forward to nowadays. Hey, there's a new character coming. I'd love to try them out. I love the XYZ character. Tying all that together and looking at territory battles, I wasn't even surprised seeing it. I was more laughing and just saying, wow, this is really absurd. And it is absurd. And for those that say, oh, everyone wants things right now, that's a game in my opinion. This is why I've joked that Galaxy is not in the true sense of the nature of a real game. One, there's way too much inequality. There's pay to win walls. Everything's randomized. But a game, in my opinion, a true game, when they're developing content, it should be a new, unique experience that is consumed over a short period of time. I think Galaxy has got people a little too used to the idea that when they make something, it's not meant to be beaten for three, four, five plus years. And that's not really normal in a game. But in this game, they're making it the normal, just like they want these game modes that update themselves without them having to do much. Territory Battles is a different breed of that where it's not meant to be beaten for multiple years on end. So again, that means they don't have to come back and really do anything to it for a very long time. The good news is with all this, unlike Data Crowds, which are unpredictable, you can't really plan around them. You can't even maybe get what you want. At least at this, the platoons, albeit insanely crazy, they're at least static. They said they're not gonna change most likely. They're just gonna stay static. So at least you and your guild can plan for the next several years on who's gonna have to Relic 9 what to get this platoon and figure, figure out the minimum and maximums that you're gonna need for these operations to really get the most bang for buck out of this territory battles. And the thing that gets me excited about this territory is not really the gameplay perspective. Seeing things like, you know, they're, they're asking for light side Wookiees. We don't have a Wookiee tax. That makes me think, oh cool, we're gonna get some more Wookiee stuff down the road. I'm excited for the characters that are gonna get reworked. I'm excited for the characters that are gonna get Omicrons. I'm just excited for the new characters that are gonna come because again, I'm playing this game for a Star Wars experience and truly the only new Star Wars experience we're going to be getting in this game is just getting new characters so that's really the reality of this game is right now I do believe it's in a maintenance mode of some sort they have the content to just kind of keep it updating by itself with minimal effort on their end while they focus on their other projects but as long as the game still makes money for the minimal effort they're putting in the game's gonna stick around and the last thing to note as well unfortunately with content like this when it comes to PvE stuff like raids and new territory battles guilds are gonna break people are gonna quit guilds are gonna merge I see, I've seen this every single time a new raid and territory battles come out. It's always, the bar is set always extremely high. And eventually with power creep, we get to that level. This is set very high up and maybe in a couple years, we'll see more of us get to that level. It's, it's hard to imagine right now, but it's unfortunate in general with, with the state of Galaxy of Heroes where I wish we could have more unique, more frequent, more in-depth, rich Star Wars experience, like the myriad of legendary events we would get in a year. Some years would get a, a unique brand new raid, unique territory battle, but as they've made it clear in interviews and whatnot, as time went on, they stopped, they want to stop doing raids. They want to stop doing all these unique storytelling experiences more often because it's too expensive. It takes too much time. It gets beaten too easily. And the part of the game is to keep providing that experience. But where the game is right now, they want to keep it bare minimal operational from what I can tell. Add those one or two characters every month or so just to put into this engine of conquest galactic challenges grand arena and territory battles and i think that's just their foreseeable plan it doesn't seem like they're willing to put that extra mile effort into this game anymore but if you're someone like me that just enjoys seeing the new characters come that's really the thing to keep you around i think but just to re-emphasize having relic nine on an entire team and a minimum requirement for the platoons it's pretty nuts, but again, they're not setting this for today. They're setting this for several years down the road, and I disagree with that, but that's just the way it is. Thanks for stopping by. Leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to our ever-growing empire, and always remember, it's great to be in the empire today.